Today I'm excited to bring you guys a guest video on my channel. This is Ryan from the Independent Investor channel on YouTube. He's going to talk to us today about the Rule of 72. He has a channel dedicated to helping the individual investor take control of their financial future. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you jump over to his channel and subscribe. The link is in the description. So let's learn more about the Rule of 72. This is the rule of 72, guys, and if you understand it, honestly, it can make you powerful. It's the single most old school tool, I guess, to get people excited about the prospects of understanding, you know, the power of money, okay? Guys, listen, this is the Independent Investor Channel. Welcome. I'm coming to you from New York City, New York, the Big Apple. It's so good to be with you. It's so important that you understand the rule of 72. And if you do work to understand it early on in your life, it's gonna make you that much more educated and that much more powerful. First thing that you need to understand is, is what is the rule of 72? The rule of 72 is something that we can employ to understand with a given rate of return or a projected interest rate on a particular investment how many years that it will take for that investment to double. By understanding how many doubling cycles we can have, let's say for example in your early 20s, how many doubling cycles could you actually get on your money and what could that mean in the future? So the very first thing that you gotta understand is a perceived rate of return. Now something that I wanna mention with regard to the rule of 72, I've got three examples of potential rates of return. You're gonna see all the time videos talking about scenarios and we usually consistently default back to an 8% standard rate of return. Now for example's sake, I went ahead and did 10% and 12% as an anticipated rate of return. If you start to get above 12%, the rule of 72 actually becomes less accurate the higher the interest rate that you get. This is really the sweet spot. And conversely, it doesn't do a whole lot of good to talk about interest rates below 8%. On Ryan Scribner's video, he talks about inflation running at about 2%. A lot of the reason why we invest and we, we try to understand this is because we're trying to get aggressive on meeting this minimum 8% to at least outpace inflation. That's the 2% that you just can't do anything about, guys. It's just there. Every year, year in and year out, it's basically consuming your money. So the rate of return, the rate of return goes over here, and we're basically dividing 72, which is the factor. And if you take the anticipated rate of return, in this particular example, the rate of return goes over here, and you simply take 72 and divide it by the anticipated rate of return, whether it be eight, 10, or 12%. And it's basically gonna give you the years to double, which is gonna be up here. What is it that this can mean for us, all right? If you're 20 years old and you're looking to get into the market, watch the videos on how to take $1,000 and get into the market, all right? Scribner puts out a lot of videos on how to take $1,000 and invest it. The reason why those videos are put out there is because you wanna be aggressive on making sure that year in in and year out, you're achieving at least this 8% rate of return in those accounts, okay? If we start to falter back and get less than 8%, it's just gonna take that much longer for you guys to double your money and have more doubling cycles in your life. So if you are 20 years old and you go ahead and take this 8% anticipated rate of return and you make that over the course of your life, basically it's gonna take nine years for your money to double. So whatever dollars are in that account, it's gonna take nine years to double. So if you're 20 and you start investing, and then you're 29, it would have been feasible to think that your money has doubled in that nine years, right? And then you add another nine years on top of that, another nine years on top of that. And that basically is the phenomenon to kind of tell you and give you some indication how many doubling cycles do I have in my life? I'm 20, could I get five or even six doubling cycles? And the answer is yes for a 20 year old. And now if you're 30 years old and even 40 years old, it doesn't mean that the rule of 72 is not useful for you. It just means that the number of doubling cycles is gonna decrease because you have less years to invest. That's just the way it is. But in your early 20s, this is where you really need to kind of understand this information, digest it, and really understand why it is we're so aggressive on protecting that 8%. 
or maybe even seeking greater returns in excess of 8%, all right? Now, I've drawn up an example for you guys to kind of understand, and I used $1,000 again because I, I, I mentioned, you know, I've watched Ryan Scribner's videos about how to invest 1,000, how to invest five or 10 or 25, right? He's trying to capture the, those groups of folks who have saved up to enter the market. And I think the majority of people who are looking to get into the market probably have saved $1,000 and they have no idea how to go about doing it or even why they're going about doing it. And the rule of 72 really can answer the why portion of it. If you end up taking $1,000 and, and that's your initial deposit into that account and you end up investing for 40 years, and we're gonna apply a DRIP, which is a dividend reinvestment program on this particular example. And I used $300 a month, okay? A lot of you guys out there have that money, can put it aside and can put it to work for yourself month in and month out, year in and year out to work for yourself. Now, the effect of a dividend reinvestment program really is a whole nother video for a whole nother time. And you can tune into other videos to really understand the effect of the DRIP. $1,000 initial, over a 40 year time horizon and $300 a month. And you're probably watching this and you're going, I can do that, I can do that. Here's where it gets tricky. You really need to pay attention. This is where most people fall off a cliff, okay? And they make a huge mistake. And you're 20 years old and you're excited because you've got a thousand, let's say you've got 5,000. You're like, I wanna invest, I'm gonna put this to work. I've got five or six doubling cycles. I'm excited. I want to invest. I'm good here. Check, Ryan. I'm good. 300 a month. I'm going to boost that up to 400 a month. I can do that. Now you've got this decision to make. Okay. You've got 40 years to invest a thousand dollars initial and 300 a month, but you have a decision to make over here. What account are you going to go into to make sure that you realize the maximum benefit back? in a zero fee account, you're gonna realize this 8% rate of return minus inflation. Again, there's nothing I can do about inflation. I wish there was, but there's not. And you either have a choice to pick over here a 0% fee-based account, or you're over here and you have a choice to go into a managed program. If you end up going here with the zero fee account, all right, and you get this 8% rate of return in this particular example, you're gonna be at $994,265, all right? And I'm certain that my viewing audience is gonna give me credit for me calling this $1 million, because it is. It's a million bucks. The decision to come over here into a fee-based account, a managed situation, where the financial institution industry averages just over 3%, is gonna only render you back same scenario of 8%, $1,000 down, $300 a month. That's gonna render you $453,609 over this same 40-year horizon. You run the 5% through the rule of 72, it takes your money 15 years to double, not nine. But if you're excited about investing and you've got this, check, and you've got this, check, for your monthly contribution, and you have a 40 or more time horizon, look at the impact of the decision that this makes. This is over a half a million dollars, guys. This half a million dollars is gone. It's lost. It's lost to fees and management fees. And a final thing I just want to mention is the effect of the drip on this particular situation puts you up to a million dollars in this account. This is based on compounding interest, right? And the rule of 72 basically gives you a snapshot of why compounding interest works, all right? If you end up investing with no dividend reinvestment program at $300 a month. Over this same scenario, your initial investment of $1,000 that goes into that account is gonna actually double four and a half times over this 40 year time horizon. This is what you're gonna be rendered 21,724. Guys, and this is why we talk about the rule of 72 as being something that it's a powerful tool. It's an old school tool but it's old school and it's good and it's valid. With all the information that we have online now, guys, it's just another tool for you guys to put into your tool bag and make you that much better of an informed investor. 
Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the video. If you have any comments on the Rule of 72, how it could apply to you, or any questions about anything that was talked about, leave those comments in the bottom section of the video. Please subscribe to the channel, support the channel. There's a lot of guys on, online really trying to give a genuine message, and really I think a lot of us are aimed at really just helping people understand this because you know a lot of us you know we, we, we read a lot and it's taken us a lifetime you know to understand this information and hopefully we can try to streamline some of that information for you guys directly um, because I think a lot of our fundamental aim is helping you know new investors that are looking to get started uh, and getting exposed to the market investing is not one of those things that we either choose or not choose to do okay I feel like it's something that you have to do. You have to do. And the sooner you take that initiative to understand investing and some of the concepts like the rule of 72, the better off you guys are going to be in the future. Thank you so much for tuning in. Good luck in your investment future.